welcome everyone this webinar we are back again take you through the journey from i to eq actually right iq to eq okay iq to eq and uh, uh, this has been very interesting because uh, first iq was very popular and last uh, couple of uh, like uh, years and daniel goldman has published his book EQ is taking up, and but it is indeed I think it was something missing link and which has like come into the management, and uh, I think this is you will find that how the transition happened. I think that we we are going to compare the Kalyan about this uh, this topic. And this topic may be new for our management concepts, but. We look into the Indian uh, Indian context. Man Buddhi Santulan is is quite old uh, from very ancient time. I say. So let's see how this Man Buddhi Santulan will come in today's webinar. So Kalyan, over to you. Thank you, Suraj. Wow, the bench, the bar has been set already high for me now. Talking about comparison with our ancient scriptures. Okay, let's see. We will do our best. One minute. I'll be sharing the screen and then starting the session. Okay. As welcome all, and as Vivek mentioned, today's topic is slightly different from our core hard skills, which we were talking about all these weeks. So coming to something personally interesting to me, and uh, that's why this topic has been chosen: uh, IQ and EQ. As we proceed, a quick check with all of you, people who have joined now. I hope all of you understand EQ. That is the assumption for which I am starting, because all of us are project managers in this community, and. Uh, you must have heard about this topic at some point of time in your career. So if not, let us know right away. I'll spend. It should not be, you know, something totally unrelated to you. So if there is anybody who is having a challenge, let us know right away. Otherwise, I assume all of you are aware of this topic somehow. Okay. So right from our childhood, growth phase, when we look at our lives, we have all been individually driven. All of us as an individual, as a child, our focus from our parents, from our peer pressure has always been, how good are you? What is your intelligence score? What is your uh, score on those various tests which we talk about? So what is it they're measuring when we talk about IQ? Let's give some thought to it. That is important for us to understand. What were we being measured on? Anybody? When we were doing all those tests, or forget the test, even in our classes, academics, and uh, peer pressure, what was it we were all being asked to perform? We had to outperform somebody, do something better. What was that? Calculative logical skills. Yeah. Okay. Logical skills. In analytics. Else? Analytics. Yes. Knowledge. Knowledge. Okay. Knowledge part of it. Yeah. Analytical thinking, as somebody has said. So how many of you felt the pressure of, you know, uh, mugging up things, if I call it, or, you know, trying to recall, cram our memories with a lot of stuff. Not only cramming it, but also be ready to spew it out on demand. Just like our today's machines like, uh, you know, robots and uh, Google, for example. You ask it anything, the system will throw out some results. Yeah, yeah, this is what it is. We have all been under such kind of pressure. We have all been taught, yeah, you need to remember, you need to recall, and you need to recall quickly. So those were the pressures, and that focus was on what skill? What did it help you to build on all that now? 
maybe we are doing the same thing to our children now we don't know consciously subconsciously we are also pushing our children to do all these things so what is it we are trying to push them to have we ever given a thought to it see this is the the irony of it we have all been doing things but why what is it we have been trying to push what are what is that we have been trying to achieve This has got a relevance to our topic today. Don't think that I am deviating from it. I am just setting the context for it. What is it we were trying to achieve, or we are forcing our children to do even now? Maintaining continuity. Maintaining the continuity by passing the relay ballot. Okay. <laughs> by passing the relay. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, uh the interesting analogy you have taken up uh, performance okay fine yeah so if you if you see all of us have been measured on our academic knowledge right we have been given books we have been given now new mediums as far as today's children go and uh, today's generation goes we have been flooded with information right from the time we have come into this world and the goal is you try to absorb you try to retain and you try to recall these were three things which we were all expected to do even today they are all expected to do day in day out i need to absorb whatever i see around whatever i hear whatever i absorb i should be able to make sense of it and should be able to recall it recall it quickly that is the added pressure to it i cannot take 5 seconds more 5 minutes more to respond compared to all others around me so this is how hard the training has been for all of us we have all been putting ourselves under pressure to learn these core skills so that is what this becomes as a technical or the core skills the the knowledge aspect of it whatever we have been trying to do and all of us each one of you here i am sure is an expert in your own chosen area it could be it it could be education it could be civil it could be mechanical whatever area you have chosen as something which you have been comfortable with you have become an expert in it so that is what the technical and the hard skills has been and interestingly the various tests which people have been doing around iq has been focused upon these aspects of it not the the domain but the particular attributes which i called about that is what they have been testing how many of you have gone through this iq test maybe in school uh, maybe in your college time or start of your career some point of time you must have done this right various isometric tests i haven't taken it myself but uh, yes uh, we we got uh, iq done for my son okay. very early in his early mm-hmm. young age okay so what was the objective of doing it uh honestly speaking nothing it's just that uh, well, okay i uh, understand that uh, yes this is this is just a number and this will this probably will uh, you know not have any direct impact on the quality of the life uh, that individual he will have Mm. but uh, you know this happened when we were looking out for some good school options correct correct and uh, it happens that there are some uh, premium schools here and then there are some okay uh, kind of schools here so we were we were we were thinking which school to opt for and then um, it led it actually led to you know getting his iq done. Yeah, I agree. So this is the dilemma which every parent also has when they try to do that. And somebody, the children going through their high school phase, uh, reaching their teenage age, and they want to decide what should be their career. People are asked to do these kind of tests to determine, okay, what is their strength, what is they are doing well, or what areas, and ho- hopefully they will do well. Very often this doesn't turn out to be true, but okay, these are all there to give you some indicators about their analytical skills, problem solving skills. that's what it is okay so now keeping you have understood what is iq and so second aspect i talked about is the age when you are doing this test if you recall 
IQ is not done when I am in my 40s or in my 50s or even in my 30s. People don't ask me to get an IQ test done. The IQ test is normally done in the pre-teens and maximum up to the 30s, up to age 30, not beyond. Very rarely do we see some organization asking you to go through the IQ test. That's an important aspect to remember. Now, juxtapose this with what is the emotional quotient. What is this all about? Have we ever gone through this pressure of learning about emotional quotient, emotional intelligence in our life? No, nobody has asked us to focus on it. Whether, whether I look at my life from the childhood or from my teenage times or even I start my career or I am setting up my own family. Nobody told me to go and train myself on EQ. What is the difference now? Sadly, that is the most important thing people should have told me to do because that is the social aspect of my life. People never told me that I should get trained on social aspects of my life. So that is the primary difference between these two things. We will get into it more detail. The objective of today's session is to help us identify these two and also take a call on is one better than the other or what is the situation. So as rightly said, many of you, IQ is all about measuring somebody's reasoning ability, logical thinking, and the cognitive skills as we talk about. The biggest problem is it is focused only on that individual, the IQ score. The IQ score is not from, uh, it's not related to the context or anything. As you as an individual, what is your score? So irrespective of the world, of the community, what is your score? That is what is the focus. Now, if I look at it from an emotional context perspective, the idea of emotional quotient is to understand your own emotions, manage your emotions in a positive way to communicate effectively. Okay. So the focus is on society, the environment in which you are working, the environment in which you are living. That is what is important. There are certain terms here. We will talk about it. What is empathy? How do I diffuse conflict? We will try to touch upon these things in our... So basically, this is a primary uh, distinction between these two. So when people say, I have to go through emotional quotient training and all that stuff, there is a challenge. To understand what is it they're going to teach me new now. And there are various, if you Google, you will find out that there are a lot of tests, popular tests which are available. I have listed here the IQ tests which are being done for adults also. I have not covered only the children. There are, there are many tests which are focused only on the child psychology aspects. So I have, for your benefit, only looked at all the ones which are applicable to adults also over here. Same thing happens with our emotional quotient. Good thing is there are various models now available for emotional quotient also. It's not uh, such a new subject that there are no frameworks, nothing. It has now matured and there are good models available. So, now the tricky part, okay? The tests are interpreted to assess the individual's cognitive skills. That's for memory, awareness, speed, what I talked about. Now, I would like you, all of you, to go through a similar test around the emotional quotient of it. Okay? I am posting a link in uh, the chat window. It is just a two-minute assessment. I would like you to take this and share your inputs if you are comfortable or at least know for yourself what is the score on your peer emotional side. This is a free test available on the Google. So please refer your chat window. I have posted the link there. Just a two minute exercise. This is an online test. This will set the context for you as we go ahead in this uh, program. I hope everybody has got access to internet as we speak. So, and let me know if anybody has any challenge in accessing it. It's a free test.
So there's just 15 statements. Don't think too much about it. Just respond to your gut feel, whatever comes to you. We'll continue in a couple of minutes. I'm assuming all of you are attempting it. So it's not as tough as our PMP exam. Very simple. Okay. Thank you for posting your score. It's each individual call. They want to or they can keep it to themselves, that's fine. I will share an example of what I did just to show you what is happening. So what happens in this tool? Okay. <clears throat> I have shared the screen. This is the page from the internet, the same test. So I'm assuming people are doing it, okay. One more minute, then we'll start. Thank you for participating and uh, being open about sharing your results. So let's see what this talks about. So the instructions were very simple. You just read the statement as they are rather than think as you should be. So this is the difference. Okay? That's why I said, just go with your gut feel. Now there are some negative questions also here. So you have to be careful while you are answering it anyway. So I just put some numbers here to see how it shows up. So you can see the score is around 54 and they have shown the results for you all. What does this mean? Your emotional intelligence is what level and what you can do and all that stuff. So this gives you a starting point if you want to understand, uh, hey, where are some tools? Are there some tools to help me evaluate? What do I do? So that's why I started off with this because now, Maybe when we go through the rest of the topics, it will be more relevant to you. Okay. So we talked about IQ. Now let's see what it says about EQ. So in EQ, these tests are all talking about your, as an individual, your awareness of the society, of the environment in which you are working. So the key attributes that they are measuring, if you look at it, is your adaptability, your collaboration skills, and your leadership. Now, this is all the more important today, that is my opinion, what I have stated here, is because in the current age of millennials or Gen Z, as we call them as, it is all the more important. The reason being, this generation, uh, we all complain about this generation being more addicted to machines than with people. The social connect is missing. The personal connect, as we talk about, engaging in social conversations, is decreasing if you see compared to what we were all doing the earlier generation. I, I don't belong to millennials. I am a generation earlier than that. So there was scope for a lot of personal interactions, social uh, interactions, which gradually going down with addiction to machines or with uh, 
social media being more popular you are able to present a face which may not be your genuine one so these are the reasons why this becomes all the more important <clears throat> now let us reflect upon your journey which i just talked about you in brief when we started off so you would see the strong iq as being the focus in for any individual in our early part of our life so in early part of our life after graduation post graduation when somebody steps into the career world what is that anxiety anybody has he or she is always worried about is how will i be accepted will i succeed will i do well and what is the big asset they are all carrying their iq their uh, hard skills knowledge the knowledge base which they have built upon and they have excelled in those areas the hard skills is what they want to prove they want to apply that knowledge in the industry or in the world and prove that they are also contributing something they are equally important but what happens in the world in the career world what happens in your journey is this true throughout your life the story remains there for you around 3 years or 5 years of your career you are fighting for your place in your organization you are fighting for recognition yes therefore it is all about i the discussion is all about i here as we talk about focus is on i for the self to establish your credential to be known to be seen as a, a person of value a person who can add value to the organization he is important because of their core hard skills it the focus is always on i me myself there is very little focus on the uh, people around you and generally that also happens in your career if you see initial stages we don't stabilize we all are bit uncertain we think maybe the first job is not right we keep moving on so lot of uh, um, shift happens in our career path we keep moving organization or we keep changing jobs or new circles so it's all about i then where does the we come from as the organ as the individual matures now what is this maturity we talk about as the individual starts taking up responsibility now this responsibility don't come only in the workplace this responsibility is coming in his own in his or her personal domain also there is a pressure from the society from the family you guys have to settle down you need to take up more responsibilities you need to be the breadwinner many many things which happen then they have to set up their own family they have to be establish their own identity so what happens now so you will see a big change in the in the mental aspect of that individual he or she doesn't go down in their hard skills or the core skills they don't give up that area but you can see the struggle initially for them to try to be something better that is how the leadership roles come in as an individual you are working in a large organization or you maybe you are a startup founder you employ a lot of people you are known for your core skills but what happens with your ability to deal with other people that is where you struggle you expect everybody to be as perfect as you are as organized as you are or as smart as you are which is not true you have to realize that the world is made up of all kinds of uh, different uh, skill sets different uh, human uh, skill sets somebody is pretty good somebody is very pretty communicative somebody is not somebody is socially amenable somebody is other person is not so how do you get along with all those kind of people that is the challenge people face they face the same challenge at home they face the same challenge at their Uh, corporate work or even with their own social network this is the challenge they see and you see this when when they have fulfilled their primary desire of being recognized so that is why this, there is a lag in this emotional quotient versus the intelligence quotient it's a natural progress nothing new about it so there's nothing surprising but this is something which we have to accept and acknowledge
So the challenge which I am talking about here is if this is accepted, then the story is true for you and me also. We have also gone through the same journey. If we reflect back on our career, yes, I could also relate to that. I was more fond of machines than people. Never used to be a, a social guy who never wanted to engage with other people. So the same challenges come up. But can you survive for long doing it? You have to learn to deal with people. You have to learn work with people. Collaboration is the key, especially if you want to get into a leadership role. And what is that role? That's all we are all into here as a common community. Our common identity is the role of project managers. So a project manager is a true leader. Now, how he or she becomes a leader if they cannot collaborate, if they cannot work with people? So this is the first thing which your managers look for in your as potential when you are going through the struggle or establishing yourself in the organization. Who has that uh, spark? from the people skills or the people abilities. And how many of you are able to transition successfully from I to V? So this transition is very important. This is a mental transition which each one of us have to go through. There is a struggle. When we give up our ego and our priorities as being first, my rather, let's say my priorities being first to be set aside and then change it to our priorities, which means my family, my unit, my team, that's how the change has to happen, the shift. So how this is going to happen? How do you achieve this? Are you, I hope all of you are in sync with what we are sharing. Taking a pause for a minute. Yes, is, hmm? yes, yes, yes. So that is the important step. So if we are if you relate to this, if you are understanding what I am trying to communicate, this is what you need to do. So what is this emotional intelligence all about? What are those aspects is the next couple of slides. So all these tools, what we talked about, the listed models all, they all talk about these essential five parameters, which we need to measure and understand. Now I'm assuming all of us are in a stage where we can safely do some introspection. That means, I am happy to hold the mirror to myself and tell, identify whom I am. That is what is called as self-awareness. Can I critically evaluate myself? That is the first step. Now that is possible only when there is some level of maturity. Else there is what we call as a principle of denial. I always deny that, no, there is nothing wrong with me. I am not imperfect. I am the perfect guy. Everything is wrong with the world around me. That is the sense of denial. I hope we have gone through that phase. We have moved on beyond it. And therefore, this is possible. Only then this is possible. So we talk about holding the mirror and understand whom I am, first of all, and critically evaluate myself. Then comes about looking at the motivation aspects which are needed. What is empathy? Then after knowing empathy, we will talk about social skills and self-regulation. We will see these things. I'll share you a quick slide which helps you to move away. How do we progress from a low in emotional intelligence to high emotional intelligence? What are those symptoms which you can work upon? So the question, the title here is what? Can EQ be improved? Yes, definitely it can be improved. It is a skill, so you can learn it. And you can learn it with experience. So what is that experience needed? What are the areas we have to focus upon? So this is how we, this is how we demonstrate. These are the attributes on the left side, which we demonstrate when I am in the stage of denial. Whereas when I move and push myself to progress towards higher EI quotient, these are the signs which I would be talking about. Let's take first example. I am always aggressive, demanding. I am bossy, and I adopt a confrontational approach. Versus here, assertive, ambitious, strong-willed, and decisive. But there is no what is missing here? The confrontational part. It does that. This, what does this symbolize for me? Is that I am not compromising on my core strength. But doesn't mean that I should be fighting with every everyone around. So that's the confrontational aspect. I give up that. Second thing, I am easily distracted. I am selfish and a poor listener. The other aspect around here is no. I am pretty warm. I am enthusiastic and sociable. 
and I am persuasive in my decision making, I am able to get work done with some others. Third aspect, I resist change. I am unresponsive. I am slow or may not be slow, but you may be stubborn for sure. That is not willing to accept. So look at that body language which has been shown there. So that itself says something. Here, I am patient. I am willing to hear others. I am a good listener. And I am consistent in my decision, in my approach to the team. And that belief builds trust when I am consistent. Fifth part, fourth part is I am critical. I am a hard to please manager or I am a hard to please individual. I am a perfectionist. This is where the challenge comes. So here I am detailed, I am careful, meticulous, but I am not looking for perfection. That is the bigger change. See, these are some of the attributes you can see here, which are uh, seen very often in people who are not greatly social. If they give up some of it and extend the, the warmth towards others and accept others as they are and leverage the strengths of others, that is the success story to be a good leader. So we talked about empathy. So what is empathy? How do we figure out this particular skill? What is it all about? So the empathy has been defined in three aspects. We have something called as Affective empathy, that means the ability to respond to others' emotions in an appropriate way. So you, you feel and you be in their shoes, basically. Can I put myself in somebody else's shoes and relate to that situation or the anguish that person is going through? <clears throat> Cognitive empathy talks about able to understand their response to a situation. Cognitive here is not the cognitive which we talked about in IQ. Here the cognitive is from a person, social aspect of it. So the meaning here is, can I relate to that emotional situation, the, the background or the context in which that person is behaving? So let's take some examples here. How many of you have faced challenges with your team members? The one thing we all know about is we as human beings don't come with the same mindset and the same mood every day to work. In a given week of five days, you may be able to see the, see the mood swings of your team members across all the five days of the week. So are you able to gauge them? Are you able to assess that quickly? And are you able to therefore still manage to get the work done from them? Any examples or any inputs you want to share? Any of you? Every uh, person here probably facing these same challenges every day. Mm -hmm. I think the solution is like we need to connect the individual to understand what exactly is happening mm -hmm. and understand his emotion. Probably mm -hmm. it's very easy to get someone in the anxiety. But if you, if you try to understand the perspective of the other person, okay, mm -hmm. I think it will in the execution. Yeah. Okay. So any any examples can you share? Simple examples. You know, all of us are leaders. We have gone through these struggles. So let's say I have a five-member team and they are of different experiences. They are not of the same level of experience. Typically, you see in a team that's how they are structured. I don't see any team of the same level across all the groups. So within the group, there are people with different levels of experience. So if I were to look at the junior most resource, who is maybe two years, into their career, their approach to that work, to that team will be totally different. So that, some, that individual may be highly enthusiastic when, on Friday, highly motivated. Whereas the Monday comes, the Monday blues hits them. So this is a different level in which they are. So I need to handle them differently compared to somebody who is pretty very much experienced and more sober in their approach to life. 
but this individual carries a lot of baggage because they have their family around back in back at outside work so what is going on in their mind multi processing multitasking not just the work life about their own personal life what's happening there are multiple people they have to worry about all those things so you can see the reactions to these people the way you respond as a manager is totally different because you try and understand that individual beyond that workplace this is where emotional aspect comes into play if you are evaluating them only on their core hard skills or their contributions to that team that is only the iq part of it the eq part comes in where you are going to go beyond that workplace and treat them as one of your own and say let's understand each other and work to make the life easier for all of us not just one person okay thank you for sharing somebody has posted a good example on the chat i'll read out if a team member made a mistake and the supervisor was too hard on him a way of showing empathy will be to offer a shoulder to cry on or a helping hand just to let him know that we are there for whatever exactly very well said and this is similar one which i was sharing is about what went wrong what is the <clears throat> mindset of that individual for a certain day to be you know off color to be demotivated or feeling a bit let down what is what is it that is affecting them is it something related to the work area where you can contribute or you could address directly or something beyond your control but can you sympathize with them and say okay what do i do how do i make it easier for you for the day to cope with the day this will help you to build better long lasting relationship with the team that individual will feel really appreciate you for your concern and they will be there with you even in your times of need see that is the key aspect of all everybody will be there to celebrate your successes but who is going to be around you at the time of failure that is the key the team which you are building the buffer which you are building is using your emotional push when we set aside the i me part of it and then i focus more on the we or ours that means my core team finally my delivery team is my team right we own them and we own them in what sense we are accountable for their performances but we own them in different way also that they become our extensions of our team and they go be ambassadors of our team wherever they go beyond our project delivery and this is the reason you see many of your followers want to work with you irrespective of the project size irrespective of their uh, their role which may be marginalized in some projects they feel comfortable to work with you as a leader how do you build that comfort level this is that aspect this slide talks about that that empathy which you build is what does that the investment which you do with people so your investment with people will never go waste and if you do it the right way of course there are investments which are negative also we don't want to talk about it let's look at the positive investments which you can do so what are those traits of an empathetic leader first aspect is develop good listening skills and be sincere about it so there is a difference between listening with my ears closed and eyes open but listening also with my heart there is a big difference there when i am listening with my heart i am totally involved in what he or she is telling me and i participate in it and i contribute so there are situations where people will talk about their problems and do we lend a ear to him so that is the same some example which she talked about now one of our colleagues is about this can we give them some solace to help them with their problems and you are good at picking up how people are feeling even without they telling you just looking at their body language or just seeing them you are able to decide, understand something is wrong or something is really good it could be both ways the body language is so uh, sensitive you cannot hide your feeling positive or negative then the other aspect you may see attribute which people will observe in you is others are also coming to you for your advice not just one or more person people from other teams also may come for your advice people who have worked with you in the past that's also possible and you are somebody who is reaching out to others to help who are suffering maybe you are a good mentor you are helping people help them with their career give them the right advice and last part is equally important you are able to 
sift through the comments which they make, the behavior they have, and you can also tell them that they are not being honest at times. This is the tricky part, but this you develop over a period of time for sure. Just like you are able to catch the behavior of your children, you are able to do that. Or if it's false, you are able to determine quickly that they are not being honest. How is that possible? There is no red flag or anything which tells you or any indicator. It's you. It's your sense, sixth sense, which tells you. So the same way it works with here also. Not only knowing it, but with your team members, with your workers, you should be frank enough to say, "I know what you are trying to do. This is not being honest. Let us be open and establish a great communication channel." So this is the most important thing as far as emotional quotient goes: being able to relate to others and establish the skill of empathy. So, what are the benefits you see if you if we develop this emotional skill, or do this exercise of that five step which we talked about? It first allows you to know your emotions. Now, how does this help you? Just knowing your emotions will not solve your problem. It is just the first step. If you know your emotions, you should also know your triggers to those emotions. What are those triggers? So. what is the trigger for me to get frustrated what is the trigger for me to feel delighted those triggers if you know you can be aware of it and you can be prepared for it in the next cycle whenever you feel frustrated what you should do what you typically do and what corrections you need to do so that's the next step so ability to manage your feeling this is tied to the first part because understanding those triggers will help you to control and manage your feelings better because it is never wise to express your feelings or frustration to your team correct right? that's that's often being said you you absorb it you let them know things are okay you are in control especially with your clients you don't let go of your feelings at that point of time maybe you are frustrated with the client maybe you are sometimes feeling uh, abused not being respected you won't lose your cool there so that's the message so and you need to motivate yourself continuously how do you keep yourself motivated you establish empathy for others you focus on building healthy relationships and avoid stress all these will help you to achieve the final one improve your work performance yeah i may be stating some things here but is this doable any of these things is doable at your end do you think you can work on these areas or maybe you are already working and seeing results i would like to share my experience okay just will take a minute so i as i said earlier no i was i was completely ignorant about this uh, emotional part of it mm. and i faced the challenges of course the consequences were there But then, fortunately, I I got the help, and then I learned this uh, learned this theory to take a pause before I say something. Mm. So when I hear somebody, and uh, before I say something, uh, I I I had to actually train my mind, and it took a lot of efforts. But then uh, I would say that is something which is helping me now. in a much more better state than what i used to be say 5 6 years back okay that pause uh, in my mind uh, has helped me so how does what does what does your mind do when you take a pause what's happening you are reprocessing or you are reevaluating the input yes 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 i am i am just uh, evaluating my my response options and possibly what will be the effect of that very good on the on the next person very well stated very good so taking a pause is not a bad thing it's okay it's just to be the others have to be a bit more patient that's fine but you are talking about the right thing there well said thank you for sharing it anybody else something as a take away for the group here
ఇమోషన్ i have now become better individual and the, you know the best compliment for each one of us is not ourselves knowing it somebody else telling you hey there is, i do see a change in you now you have become much more controlled you are not uh, uh, throwing up you are not emotionally so you are not reacting so fast you are not so uh, flippant so those kind of comments when you hear those things give you some satisfaction yes you are doing something right that's what is happening to you so was it easy to do that how many of you felt it was so easy to switch so there are always exceptions to every theory there may be some of you who are socially very well connected in their earlier years i am keeping them aside in general we are talking no it was not easy to switch of course yeah it's a, it's a difficult journey and uh, the only the first victory is for us to realize that the self awareness and the self control let me change that word instead of saying self awareness let's say doing establishing self control control over oneself rather than taking out the anger on somebody else or the frustrations on somebody else that's what happened in our earlier period if i am doing anything wrong i don't accept that i am doing wrong i just take it up out or take it off on somebody else that's not a good sign it's your fault you have not taken care of your thing so you need to be responsible for it so that is the first step you see as self control which you develop then things start falling in place slowly okay so the take away for me was simple what i have put here these are all my personal opinions around here around the take aways these are not uh, you can have your own take away we would like to hear from you so in my view both iq and eq are equally important for a leader or a leadership role and that's why i have shown them that to be balanced here So the picture demonstrates that my opinion here that the project manager needs to have the right balance between IQ and EQ. IQ is important, and uh, see, luckily we are all focusing upon that IQ development in the early stages of our career or our life. So IQ is taken for granted; it is available, and that is why we were able to stand out in the competition wherever we were, and we have come to a situation where people recognize us as leaders. so that's first step taken care of but if you have to succeed in this leadership role i'm just talking about stepping into the leadership role now to succeed in the leadership role we have to acquire some new skills we have to think differently it's not the same old story will not work so what is it different that job profile has changed what is it different so we even when people share with you the r and r they don't tell you about this aspect that this social aspect is equally important you need to work on it nobody takes that effort to put into you of course there are again exceptions some good managers or mentors at your end may help you with that may tell you no no this is important invest time and effort in correcting it possible but largely this message doesn't go across strongly so they push you to through a lot of training programs but those training programs are they focusing on the social skills their focusing is upon communication uh, presentation reporting skills how well do you talk as audience and all that so in my view this is equally important if you allow them to build their emotional quotient early start early in your life you will see a lot of success much faster than your peers so it takes effort 
it takes investment at your end and you need somebody a buddy or maybe somebody you are confident or your bff whoever it is who would be the sounding board for you that is how it works because it is not easy to do that evaluation yourself and think oh i am great that doesn't work it always works better if you have a support system so you need somebody to bounce off your idea things about how things are moving or is there somebody who is continuously giving you the feedback is there a progress in how you are doing things how you are approaching what is the difference they notice that will bring a big change and definitely accelerate your personality development so my take is you need to focus on this topic equally and uh, invest time and effort i'm sure you would definitely do far better because we are ending up as project managers our role never ends with one me myself and team there are a lot of stakeholders around us and these stakeholders keep changing throughout the life cycle of my project so i cannot be caught unaware i cannot be caught off guard i need to be seen as always in control of what not just the hard measures of the project but also the control of the people involved in the project so people management involves a lot of emotional intelligence so that's the my thoughts around it i would like to hear your feedback and experiences and we are ready to open open it for any q and a's as well uh kalyan if i if i can yeah so yeah so uh, maybe just a bit outside the purview of uh, project management but then uh, what will be the right time to introduce uh, this emotional intelligence to somebody because okay what my experience to, uh, tells me is uh, iq fine you you are born with that eq is something you will have to develop so what will be the good time to introduce is it uh, is there kind of a recommended age or something there is no recommended age but i think we can start with life not necessarily the workplace as the pressure is on to develop the iq i think as children if our families if our parents invest the right time to develop the social skills in us definitely that will be a good stepping stone will be an advantage but when you move on to your career and formal world yes from uh, the emotional intelligence aspect should be addressed i believe even in the beginning itself because finally people have to collaborate and work with others so they need to be made aware that there is success is not built on one person success is built for the whole team together so it's not one person alone who succeeds will make up uh, the whole organization that doesn't work like that so that education has to happen maybe awareness will be done at that time but then as they progress in their careers when somebody moves on from an individual contributor to becoming a lead level or starting mentoring others that is where we need to introduce them early that is my recommendation if you ask me how to do this now for people who have already reached the leadership level they have to anyway do this thing i hope is that possible doable let's see let's hear from the audience is there a consensus in that thought or any difference of opinion there are many people with experiences here i would like to hear your views this is not a, this is not a one way forum here what we are talking about yeah so somebody has shared their opinion ai is a skill for life it applies to every stage of life every situation and profession so she has acknowledged that we can be intelligent in different areas if we don't have the skills of ai it will be hard not to fail or that means it is easy to fail but so the social connect the ability to work with others matters hi good morning so yeah, good. yeah um it's me yeah i open the microphone so um, 
what I have seen as um, in my own example, I used to be very uh, critical of my work. And when I had some mis mistakes, you know, it was like, I felt like all the work was coming down on my shoulders that mm. I had failed and that was no good. So actually I learned that mistakes are going to happen in anywhere, like any, in any place. And instead of, you know, like we say, crying on a spilled milk, I, I, I've learned to see those mistakes as learning lessons. Yeah. I learned to be more emphatic, emphatic with myself. So I am not that hard. And by doing that, um, you know, the different skills that um, emotional intelligence brings, all of them have to work together because empathy is, it cannot be just an isolated skill. Yeah. And that's what it, that's what is my comment, that it applies to every stage of life. It could be at home, um, outside, when you talk to a neighbor, um, maybe the neighbor, you think that the neighbor look at you badly, but actually the neighbor had a problem and we just jump to say, oh, he's mad. Actually, yeah. maybe he didn't even see you. Yeah. So yeah, so, that, that was part of my experience. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it. So she brought up a very good point that looking for perfection. Now she was looking for perfection in her own work. That's the first step when we are accepting that, okay, I may not be perfect in all my areas of work. That's the first step. The second step, empathy comes in when we also realize the others need not be perfect. The people who are working with me need not be perfect. They are also humans. They are also prone to some mistake at some point of time. And we need to tolerate them, accept them as they are. That is the bigger step. So once that happens, then you're going to definitely lend an extending, lend a hand to them and say, okay, let's fix it. Nothing is going wrong too badly. Let's see how we can salvage it or do the best out of it. That is the support which we all expect from each other. And that will make life a lot more enjoyable and stress-free. So the expectation of perfection adds a lot of stress to you. To you, That is the challenge. So that's where the example we talked about as making life stress-free, removing this perfectionism. Okay, that was a good example. And we have time for one more. If there is, if there is anybody who wants to volunteer, please go ahead before we wind up. Anybody wants to talk about their own, or may not be yours, but somewhere you have seen somebody in your circle or one of your leaders who have got out of it. Anything would help because this is when we share. It's how it's going to give confidence to others. Yes, this is doable. This is not a big mountain to climb. Okay, fair enough. So I hope people understood it and appreciated the session. Thank you all for taking your time out and participating in it. You may use that link which I gave you for quick assessment. There are further interesting models available from there. You may use it. Oh, yes, we share the presentation. Uh, you will get an email, Maria, to, uh, when you register, that email will be used to share the presentation. Uh, and you can visit our YouTube channel. I'll just write it here. You will see these things posted in our YouTube channel regularly. We do these sessions every Tuesday. Thank you all. Appreciate your patience and your support. Look forward to you meeting you next week.